is Gina Charneski, and she's going to be telling us about palaces. Um, sounds very nice. It's actually some art and science thing, so it should fit you know, quite nicely with the crowd, I think. We've probably got some artisty, arty people and some sciencey people, so it should be good. That was a hard act to follow. <laughs> And um, the text doesn't seem to be showing up on this one, but this is a project called Palaces, which is a collaboration between a Liverpool Art and Biosciences Collective and a Sarah Rankin, who's a stem cell researcher in, in London. My kids came home and asked me if the tooth fairy was real. What do you tell your children? I have became interested in um, structures of power and belief systems. What we... Uh, told to believe in is true and what we believe what we're convinced isn't true there's lots of myths about tooth fairies but these seem to stem from witchcraft and burying your teeth under roots of trees so that you can find them in the afterworld the um the structure had to be a combination of the real and the fantastical and the natural and the constructed to represent all the kind of complex issues that come into that and we based a drawing on what we thought was the result of that um, complex form. This is going to be made in a crystal resin structure. So it's two meters wide by two meters high, half a meter deep. Um, that's m myself and my daughter starting the test of it. But it's actually going to be encrusted with 12,000 children's milk teeth that are donated from a public campaign across the UK. Um, what this project has become about is a public donation campaign because obviously you need to get people on board to participate in this and you might ask what's this got to do with science. Um, I've been interested in the stem cells regenerative potential or the, the body's ability to regenerate itself and what this means for the future of medicine particularly in light of the NHS cuts. Now um, we, I'll throw my notes away. We became interested in what, what's useful in terms of the body in, in recycling this matter. And already stem cell research has been used for brittle bone disease, leukemia. But it took us a year and a half to find out there was a public stem cell bank. And this is run by a charitable trust rather than the National Health Service. The um, National Health Service has a collection of stem cells and 98% of these stem cells are from Caucasian donors, i.e. they can't treat mixed race and they can't treat people from ethnic origins. And why would you want to donate to something like that? Um, basically to help yourself. If you can imagine a future where the future is, future of medical treatment is based on stem cell research and most of our population of the larger cities can't be treated with that. Then, then you start getting worried. Now we're looking at this as part of a bigger project, which is looking at tissue that's wasted from medical research. People who've donated their tissue to medical research and not known where they're gone. What we're also concerned about is public perception of stem cells. When you think of that, you think of fetal stem cells, stuff that's taken from embryos, and it's not. There's a lot of stem cells that are taken from fat, from bone marrow, from blood. And what they've been able to do in the last two years is take these stem cells back to, their, to a state where they can become anything. Fetal stem cells can become anything. T adult stem cell tissues can become specific things like heart tissue, blood. What they're actually doing now is making bladders and tracheas from stem cells, regrowing them and putting them back into patients. But as part of this project, collecting teeth... Um, and you can see here, children have to donate thousands of teeth to create creepy sculpture. We have these institutions behind us now who have come on board. Again, we go back to palaces and structures of power and authority. But not only that, is we've been approached by BioEden, which is the institution that claims it can take the pulp from children's teeth and use that as a stem cell bank for the future. Now, children's teeth are by nature dead when they fall out. Um, so we're actually also looking at the hype and myth of selling people false assurances of what could be possible for the future. At the moment, stem cell treatment can only treat up to an eight-year-old child because you can't actually grow the stem cells. 
But Virgin Stem Cell Bank have um, set up in Qatar. And the last slide, which um, I forgot to say, was the Human Tissue Authority's relationship to the use of human tissue is um, we're not covered if it's from a living donor. So we're looking at the future of ethics in relation to the donation of body parts, and that really should come from the patient or the participant, and that's basically what the project's about. And that's where you can send your tooth to or your milk teeth. You leave a little token under your pillow so the fairy knows to take the token and not the tooth. And there's a donation box in the blue coat, or you can go to that PO box. That's it. Thank you very much, Gina. Um, yeah, lots to, lots to chew on with that one, which I hadn't intended that pun until just then. Sorry about that. Um, it's all right. I'm going to be kind of stepping down in a minute, and then you won't have to hear me again. It's all good. Um, so, yeah, unfortunately, that brings us to the end of, uh, of Ignite for, for this quarter. Um, so I think if we should all just you know, put our hands together for all the speakers we've had tonight. They've been really good. Um, yeah. Lots to discuss and kind of uh, think about afterwards. Um, and uh, a thanks to all the kind of behind-the-scenes behind the staff. So Neil Morin, um, Mandy Phillips sat in the middle, Andy Goodwin sat at the back, John McCarroll sat at the back, uh, Dan Lynch also at the back, Andy Freeney, who I can't see anymore, but it's surely around here somewhere. Um, so yeah, thank you all very, very much for helping out. And me? No, you don't want to thank me. I'm no good. <laughs> You're too kind, really. So now it's just, just see, you shouldn't have thanked me. I've gone all tongue-tied. Um, now's the time just to kind of a chat and uh, get another beer. Um, we've got the kind of space for the rest of the evening, so you know, um, plenty of time to discuss what we've been uh, listening to tonight. A um, few final things. Just uh, if you uh, you should follow Ignite Live on uh, Twitter if you're on Twitter, you can find out about when the next ones are. Um, we run them roughly once a quarter, uh, so it'll be like yeah, another three months or so before we have the next one. Um, if you want to find us and you're not on Twitter, then Google Ignite Liverpool, and I'm sure you'll find the website. So tell your friends, bring them along to the next one. Um, and if you want to speak, because you've seen now that you know it's only five minutes, and you know the whole format and stuff's kind of fixed for you, so. It's not really anything for you to do. It's really simple. Um, then, then just you know, give one of us a shout um, or send us a tweet or an email or something later because we're always on the lookout for, for new speakers to kind of talk, tell us about their passions at the next event. So uh, thank you very much. <laughs>